Oh, it is not Wednesday. You're hearing that song. It is a Thursday, and I'm super excited. D'Angelo delivered. I asked him to come on the show on Thursday to talk about Amazing Race, and not only is he he's on the show, he brought a friend. Look who we have. We got a four box. We got D'Angelo and Gary Barnage, the stars of last night, Amazing Race. Um, I no. was so tuned in you guys gary you are this is your first time on the show like i'm just really excited to have you gary on the show today join us because you did you dealt with d'angelo which i have absolutely no oh, idea God. like i i really i all the props to you all literally all the props to you thank you for joining us though oh thank you for having us now last night amazing race the watermelons the watermelons the watermelon i was for y'all when y'all chose the watermelons i was like oh this is this is perfect this is gonna be it's gonna be a lot easier no. than that dancing thing y'all were leading the way what happened gary is what happened <laughs> gary I knew that is was what damn happened i'm gonna tell you we we don't we didn't have two choices we had one choice gary can't move his neck so because state. gary can't move his neck we couldn't do the bottle challenge okay. mm. That so is true. It wasn't even a question. I have limited, I have limited uh, movement in my neck. I can't all look up like they had to on the thing. So I don't know if we'd ever been to do the bottle challenge. That's why when he said in the middle of it, would you want to change? I was like, no, we're not changing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hardest thing with the bottle challenge, too, is that not only was it just keeping it on your head, but like mm -hmm. the part where you had to lay down, I don't think if you can't move your neck all the way, like that part would have been game over. So you had to do the watermelons. It took hours not to rub it in and take you back to that place. But D'Angelo, like you were pretty convinced that you guys were going home. What was I, it like to realize you weren't? Uh, well, th this is when I, I, I thought we were going home because we, we got out there. We was the first one to get there. Everybody passed us. And not, not only did everybody pass us, it went from like morning time to night. And I was like, oh, yeah, we definitely eliminate. I was like, why don't somebody come get us? and let us know that we've been eliminated instead of us having to actually finish this challenge. Uh, so we end up finishing the challenge and we get to the mat and I'm telling Gary the whole time, I'm cramping, I'm barely making it, I'm, I'm basically looking for a way out. He won't give it to me. Uh, and we get to the mat and he was like, you're not last. And I'm like, who the hell didn't make it? And all <laughs> I could think of is, boy, them damn blonde. <laughs> why did you guys call? I mean, obviously I know why, but how did the like? How did he become the? All of you guys call them the blondies. Like that. that like that is their group name. So at, at the beginning, we we actually gave every team team names. Like we created team names for everybody. So our actual name for the blondes was the Blonde Bandits. That's what we gave them before <laughs> we started with the Blonde Bandits. No idea. I guess it was just the, everybody has easy ways to identify their team. They have never announced what we've called the green team. I don't know if they have the rights to. We call them Hogwarts. So we always <laughs> called them that, but they always get put as the green team. But, uh, yeah, we did not have that name for them either. Wait, so what yeah. is you all's yeah. team name? Well, yeah, exactly. We get the uh, football players. We wanted cinnamon and sugar. That's what we told everybody we wanted our name to be, but they didn't go with that. All right, we'll call you guys cinnamon, cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon and sugar. <laughs> cinnamon and sugar. I don't mind doing that. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> Everyone else is all in on the football players, though. Everyone's like, well, we saw the football players, but we thought the football players. But mm -hmm. I have to ask you guys, because the, the team to beat right now is Will and James. They yeah. finished first two challenges in a row. What makes them so good and so scary as competitors? Okay, well, so go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. No, you got uh, it. <laughs> first of all, they're super fans. I, I mm -hmm. told you before I went on the show, I didn't watch an episode. I told Gary I did, which I kind of did because I put it on in the background and I did the stuff that I needed to do, but not watching the actual show. They're super fans. I think uh, James said he applied 12 times or nine oh, times wow. or 11 times. They actually, like, watching it last night, them practicing the bottle challenge at home when it was time for them to do it. I was like, yo, this is insane. Like, mm -hmm. who does it? <laughs> like, I, I've never watched a TV show and was like, you know what? I'm going to try that. Uh, other than wrestling, but, I, I mean, I did that in the actual wrestling ring. But I, I was like, this is – nobody just watches a TV show and just be like, you know what? I'm going to try that. But then, you know, I thought about it and I was like, you know, I saw Meg dress up as – Beyonce, so obviously she sees stuff on TV and try to mimic it as well. And then I saw Jess with the glasses on yesterday, and I'm like, yep, 
she she has that anchor man feel going for so she obviously sees stuff and try to mimic those so you know i guess it's quite common in america wait hold up hold up the fact that you're calling us out and did you guys not dress up like full on like alien and predator for halloween so you guys do try some stuff like y'all went all out we, we actually <laughs> brought, brought, brought those costumes to Comic-Con. We wore them around Comic-Con. Oh, nice. I have to ask mm. you guys about the Comic-Con thing, because it was, like, very lightly glossed over on the show. Just how big of Comic-Con <laughs> fans are you, actually? Well, I would say we're probably big fans of Comic-Con, but the fact is it's hard to get into Comic-Con. Okay. So uh, we've only been one time, but uh, we plan to go back. Obviously, we couldn't go this year because of COVID, but... That, that's something we'll plan to go back to. We just like trying to outdo each other. We had costumes ready for the next time. Uh, we just haven't got it done yet. Oh, can we get a hint of what that costume is going to be? I think the anticipation of waiting is better. Oh, okay. <laughs> T might give it away, but I'm not going to yeah. give it away. <laughs> All right. Look. I, I, I do, I, I do want to say this, though, about the Amazing Race. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am headed up to here. With Gary's good guy persona and making me look like the the bad guy because of this. He blew up in Brazil uh, about an issue that we had Mm -hmm. um, at the docks because they took all our stuff. He absolutely lost his his mind. And I, I was like, now this is the Gary that I want to see on TV. Fast forward two years later, they don't even show that. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? You had a golden opportunity to show people that Gary actually gets mad and you didn't show it. Unbelievable. Now, so so for those who don't know, yes, Amazing Race was filmed almost two years ago. With you guys re-watching it, relive it all, do you guys get even more mad? Or like, do you still remember, like, oh, I remember that. I forgot about that moment. <clears throat> I, I would say we probably forgot about so much of it. Because, <laughs> like, I don't remember saying some things. I know D doesn't remember saying some things. No. Like, I know they blanked me out at the end when they announced we weren't eliminated because I said something. I have no idea what I said. Not the slightest <laughs> thing I said. So I, a lot of it we forgot because it took two years. So obviously mm-hmm. some things bring back bad memories. Like we don't like watermelons. Neither one of us like watermelons anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and, and with that being said, too, I don't know if you heard it, uh, but if you watched the Manaus Brazil episode, like Gary, when Gary was like, I'm from Florida. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm not. He kept saying that because it was so hot, and I'm like, "What the hell? What the hell does you having to be from Florida have to do with the fact that the the damn stove is on in Brazil and it's heating up my whole everything? Like, can I not be hot? Like, I understand. Okay, you from Florida, I get it. But he said he was from Florida multiple times, and I got tired of it. And I was like, "Well, you know what? I'm not. I'm not from Florida. Okay, I'm not from Florida." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! This this, this show really tested people's relationships. It really yeah. is testing people's relationships. Seriously, you see, like the married couples are having Ooh. moments where we need to learn to Come communicate in better. I was Come like, in oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, and also, did y'all not see? So where I was standing by the tree, Gary throws the watermelon. First of all, I was tossing them to him. Y'all mm-hmm. saw me tossing him the watermelon. I did. When it was his time to throw the watermelon, he was launching them hoes like he was a <laughs> home <Mahomes> or somebody. <laughs> throwing it on fourth and one and he trying to score a touchdown he gonna talk to the, he hit the tree the watermelon exploded he told me it's my fault because i was standing by the tree it was he was standing right next to the tree that's his fault i wish i did keep back he actually ended up dropping six watermelons during that whole time i didn't drop count it yeah he, and he still remembers said, two years sure. later yeah, i did count it all while we were doing it why they were filming i was like that's one uh, so i'm gonna count all of them he got to six I'm like, yeah, just yeah, like and, your career. And the whole time he was just like, I didn't drop one. I said, yeah, because I tossed them to you. It was more so the throw, not the damn kick. Did you did you see how hard he was? The watermelon always be blaming the, 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 the tree. tree. And he real. was expecting me to catch those. Hey, real quick, what's the hygiene situation like? We've been trying to figure that out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, how are we? How often are we showering? Are we brushing teeth, Y'all getting deodorant, all this stuff? Tea. Yeah. Oh well, during the during the leg, you have no time for anything. You don't even have bathroom break time because you just got to go. But after the leg, so, you have wait, time to shower and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, well, you just don't. You just hold it in until you get done. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, cool. I can I can't say this. And and Gary Gary is a stickler for this. This is the only thing that drove me crazy. When I was like, dude, I really got to go to the bathroom. Tough, tough. Hold it. Hold mm-hmm. it until we finish Correct. this. 
uh, hold it till we finish these challenges. Like you got it. You either gonna pee and do what you got to do before the race or at the end of the race. You can't do it during the race because we could potentially get eliminated. And I'm like, bro, look here. You gonna? I mean, you mean if I just get a bad case of diarrhea in the middle of this race, I gotta hold it. Yep. That is true. I gotta hold it. Like, yes, yeah, that's like, why you don't that eat. Was, like, <laughs> That was one of his rules going into it because he felt like he was going to take the captain. He was going to put the C on his jersey because he's watched more episodes and it was his idea. Like, he was like, yeah, this is one of the rules now. I don't have many, but <laughs> you got to use the bathroom on your own time, not on race time. Well, as uh, everybody saw after the first episode, I had to take the C because he messed up who had to do the music challenge. Mm -hmm. So I had to take that captain role. So <laughs> he see. gave it to me because he knew he was wrong. I see toilet like, yesterday, so, this today. <laughs> yeah, Here we are. And, and, as, and as far as the hygiene situation, everything in your bag belongs to you. That's all you have. So when we go to these these hotels and we're staying, you know, 12, 12 hours in this hotel, you're confined to this hotel room. You can't leave your hotel room. So, like, I'm talking about not coming to hallways. Like, you're literally in mm -hmm. these hotel rooms for however long it is. That's when you have the opportunity to wash your clothes and you use a bar soap or whatever it is that oh, you wow. brought with you. By by this leg right now, like uh on our way to wherever we're going, everybody smell bad. Everybody smell like <laughs> I, they smell like mildew. Everybody smell bad. And it's so bad that when I got home, I threw all that stuff away. I was like, I'm oh. not keeping anything. Gary kept his shoes. I'm like, bro, why? Yeah. I still wear the shoes. You still wear still the wears shoes? Them? Yeah. Did I you ever get the smell out? No, they're, they're clean. They I've washed them multiple okay. times. Okay. Everything. They're clean now. All right. Well, so yeah. the watermelon wasn't the only challenge that you guys had to have. I want to ask you guys about the orchestra and building the cello. I know, you know, D'Angelo, you did that task, but overall, I feel like everybody was so emotional when, once they built the cello and saw the kids play with, play with it and play on it. How crazy and just amazing was it to see that these kids are playing with musical instruments built by tr off of trash? Yeah, I, I thought it was amazing to see that. I didn't know D was going to finish as quick as he did. He did a great job with that. But just knowing that they're able to take that kind of stuff and make instruments and be able to play it where it sounds amazing, that was just an awestruck moment for me. Yeah, I was, I was blown away because I didn't know they was going to actually play it. Like, after I put it together... And I, I have to give kudos to Michelle because she helped me. I, I put it together fast. And then when I went in and got it checked the first time, uh, it was denied. And I was like, well, what what did what did I do wrong? And Michelle walked up and she was like, hey, make sure that you look inside and that you uh, make sure it's tuned right. And I'm Ooh. like, oh, snap. That's right. I got to make sure it's tuned. Not knowing that they was going to play it. So when I took it in there and they was like, yeah, they're going to actually play it. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. There's nothing that I've ever built that anybody can play like, as far as a musical instrument goes. Mm -hmm. Got in there, they played it, and I was like, yo, can I have my, can I have that back? Like, let me get that. <laughs> like, I built it. Let me, let me get that. And they and was like, no, nah, these for the kids. And I was like, well, they got a whole <laughs> bunch of them. Like, let me, can I get that one? Wait, so, and Michelle's one of the sisters, and she's not a part of the oh, allegiance. Alliance. Yeah, the alliance that you guys have. So the fact that she helped y'all, that counts That's for something. Nice. Yeah, but I don't know if she knew that she helped me, though. She just kind of was, like, saying it. But I, I just wanted to give her kudos if, you know, she's watching. I, I also <laughs> want to say this because we hadn't had a chance to talk about the other legs uh, mm -hmm. as it relates to, like, some of the, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. I, when we got, uh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. We're having uh -oh, some D. connection problems. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, gotta, I gotta deal with that all the time from him. <laughs> Do you know what he was gonna say, Gary? I have no idea what part he was gonna talk about. There's, there's so much behind the scenes. Though. Like he's still going. He, he has no idea we're having connection issues. This is 2020 to its team. Well, he should be on his computer upstairs. I blame him because he mess. He, this is what he does all the time. He's still going. If, he, if the man can build IKEA furniture without instructions, we yeah. should be able to fix the internet connection. <laughs> oh, he's, he's terrible. He's in his basement and he can't. He has no He can't. No service down there. It's terrible. Oh. The fact that he always goes down there, it blows my mind. But 
<laughs> he's still going. I don't hear him. He's still going. <laughs> Gary, I want to ask. I want to ask you about Hung and Chi. Are they really that nice? Like they are so nice on the show. I will say everybody is that nice, and that's oh. the crazy thing. You would the, the way they're showing it. Like they're showing Leo and Alana as being like bad. Same with Will and Jay. But everybody's super nice. It's super friendly. Uh, show and Hung and Chi are really amazing people. Oh, they're awesome. Cool. They're definitely good people for sure, and they're being shown in a perfect light. When you're dealing with such nice people, and I know it's a TV show, and so you have to pump drama into it and figure out how to make things a little spicy. You had the situation yesterday where like you're passing notes, you and D'Angelo are distracting mm-hmm. people. When it comes to like playing that side of the game, how do you evaluate yourselves as a team? And then between the two of you, who's better at kind of like playing dirty a little bit? Well, I, I think it was just a group effort because it was all all five of us teams trying to work together and do what we had to do to make sure the other teams didn't catch us or see what we were doing. So I think that was a huge part of it. And I, I just took the role, hey, I'll go talk to him and, and distract him with Riley. And then D'Angelo's just sitting over there not really doing much because Hung and Chi and Will and James were doing most of the other legwork. But the thing is, all you have to do is send D over to talk somebody. You know, he'll talk for an hour, so he'll distract them as well. So if I had to give somebody that role, that would be D. Oh, oh, oh. And he pops back and up. He's oh, back. Hey, he is back. Look at that face. <laughs> he moves fast. Wow. I am offended. I am offended, Gary. I am a very quiet person, okay? <laughs> I don't talk much at all. No. Not at all. Never. At all. We never go over no, our time no limit. No opinions. Never go over our time limit here. All right, guys, really quickly, I know you guys can't give anything away, but can you tease anything for the next coming week so they get even even more entertaining, some fights between you guys might break out? I, I do get mad at D for something. We'll have to see if they show it, but I do get mad at him for something. If they don't, we'll be able to talk, talk to you about it. But see, here's the thing, though. Gary gets mad about anything that I do because it's never his fault. He'll tell you, nothing's ever his fault. There's always an outside source that calls him to do what it is that he does. Just usually be his fault. (laughs) <laughs> well, we can't wait to see it continue to play out. We'd love to see you guys live tweeting during it, too. So if you don't, be sure to follow both of them on Twitter, mm-hmm. at D'Angelo RB and at Gary Barnage. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're excited. I think we're going to have you guys come back and talk The Amazing Race on Thursdays following Wednesday night episodes. Yeah. We cannot wait. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank Go you. Go get us this money. Uh, can, I, yeah. can, can I tell y'all something weird about Gary, though? Sure. sure. So Gary didn't sleep at all in Bogota when we stayed in the salt mines because he can't sleep unless there's a TV on. So because it wasn't a TV on, he stayed up the entire night (laughs) and listened to somebody snore. It wasn't me, but it was somebody. Yeah, you know who it was. (laughs) Oh, teasing something. Okay, we're going to have to ask you about who was the snore (laughs) next week on the show then. (laughs) Gary, welcome to the Rise and Grind family. We're excited about you joining us on Thursday to always recap Amazing Race. And Gary, as D'Angelo might have told you, we want you guys to win because D'Angelo promised us a steak dinner. So now if you win too, you'll have to get us a steak dinner as well. (laughs) That's how it works. It's like, wait, 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 wait. I didn't know that was part of the equation. We just became friends. We just became friends. But yeah, I'm Southern, so we all family in this group. (laughs) All right, Gary D'Angelo, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you guys next Thursday. Can't wait to watch you guys next Wednesday on Amazing Race on CBS. They came in aggressive. (laughs) I'm Southern. Give me a steak. (laughs) <laughs> thanks All you guys right. we'll see you next week thank you For okay sure. <laughs> steak dinners maybe steak breakfast good transition because one. we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we have ryan trim from 117 prime one of the restaurants participating in memphis's downtown dining week we'll get a little taste of what they have to offer coming up next